I'm real. Welcome back, Codebreakers. All right, a quick but important announcement before we get into today's workflow. You've probably seen the incredible previews of the WAN 2.5 video model. Yes, it looks amazing, but the big question everyone is asking, can we run it locally? As of right now, the answer is no. It's currently only available through developer APIs and partners for testing. No open source, no local download for Comfy UI yet. I'll be covering it in depth for a future episode. But for now, don't waste your time looking for the download button. But today we're focusing on a tool that you can run right now on your own machine. A while back I made a video on Quen Image Edit. A lot of you watched it, used it and learned the basics. But technology moves fast and a brand new, more powerful version was just released. And I think this is the model that prompted Google to release Nano Banana, which was quickly followed by Sea Dream. And now we have Quen Image Edit coming back with an even better version. Today, I'm showing you the definitive guide for these new September models. We're going to cover the right files to download, the simple workflow to use, and how to get the best results. Let's get in. So, okay, let's get this 100% correct. You need to go to the official comfy.org Hugging Face page. The link is in the description. In the split files folder, you will find the new models. You want the new checkpoints that end in 2509. Now the full precision model is 40 gigabytes and the FP8 version is 20 gigabytes. Now to be crystal clear, this is a new standalone checkpoint. So I've deleted my old Quen image edit checkpoints and I've replaced them with these versions. It's a slightly updated workflow, which is now on my site. It's incredibly simple. You can also grab it from my Patreon. If you go into Comfy UI browse templates, you should find a basic version there. All right. Let's take a closer look at this workflow because it has a really cool feature that will save you a ton of time, the Lightning LoRa. First up, if you need to download any of the models we're using today, I've put all the direct links in the notes box on the left hand side of my workflow file. These are of course all available from Hugging Face, but you can use the links here. Just make sure to put the model in the Diffusion Models folder and the LoRa in the LoRa's folder. Now, this workflow, is set to use a special performance LoRa called the Quen Image Lightning. A LoRa, if you're new to this, is a small specialized upgrade you can apply to a main model to change or improve its results. This specific LoRa is designed for one thing, speed, and it has its own specific settings. When you have this LoRa connected and enabled, you can get incredible results with the settings dialed way down. You only need four steps and a CFG of one. I'll say that again, just four steps and a CFG of one. It's incredibly fast. But what if you don't want to use the LoRa? Maybe you want a more standard high quality generation. No problem. You can just bypass the LoRa node. But if you do, you must change your sampler settings. Without the LoRa, you'll need to increase your settings to get a good image. I found that 20 steps with a CFG of around 2.5 to 3.5 works perfectly for the base model. Now, you'll see a few other loaders in the workflow, especially for the clip and the VAE. What are they? Let's keep it simple. The clip model is basically the model's is. It's what understands your text prompt and translates them into a language that AI can understand. The VAE is the model's eyes. After the main process is done creating the image in a compressed latent space, the VAE is what translates that back into the actual pixels that you can see. A good VAE means you can get crisp details and rich colors in your final image. So clip understands the words and VAE creates the final pixels. Easy as that. Now let's run some tests. So we load this image of this woman and for this test I'm using the FP8 version and I'm also using the FP8 clip encoder. And so she's wearing a white t-shirt and the prompt is she is wearing a leather jacket. And we'll run the workflow with the Lightning LoRa enabled. Now the first generation usually takes the longest as the models need to be loaded into the VRAM but subsequent generations should be much, much quicker. And as you can see, this model produces a fantastic image with the character consistency maintained very well. And side by side comparison is an exceptional image. So we're off to a flying start and we're gonna put this model through its paces. So here I'm uploading an image of a little doodle I done on the back of a piece of paper. And the first prompt was an image of a dinosaur with some mountains in the back. 
and I was quite surprised to see it produced anything at all. So you can see what it's done here. So I then changed the prompt to a high resolution Pixar style image of a dinosaur with some mountains in the back. The image was really good, but it still had some text in it. So I added no text to the end of the prompt and that finally worked and I got a good image. As you can see, the model's able to understand exactly what was required here. And I'm still using the FP8 version. That's the 20 gigabyte file, open source, available to everyone. So for the next test, I'm going to change the model to the FP16 40 gigabyte version. And also I'm going to change the clip encoder to the full precision too. This is the 7 billion parameter vision language model. And for the rest of the tests, I'll be testing it on full precision. So next we'll be testing the text in image transfer. So here I've loaded up an image of a shop front and the prompt is change the word code breakers to AI decoded. So the first prompt didn't work. It replaced the entire signage and removed the word supermart. So I had to reprompt it. But on the second one, it worked. So this model is extremely adept at changing text within an image. So if that wasn't amazing enough, let's try the next test. Let's do the Studio Ghibli test. Here's a realistic image of a girl and we want to change it to Studio Ghibli style. The prompt is simple. And as you can see, the model has absolutely no problem with that. All right, before we jump into the multi-image tests, I want to quickly explain why this new model is such a game changer. It's all about these three image inputs. This isn't just for stitching photos together. Think of these as three powerful channels you can use to control your final image. You can use one input for your subject and the second for guidance. This is where you plug in your control nets. You can feed it in a person in image one and a depth map of an open pose skeleton in image two to get precise control over the final composition and pose. You can use them for multiple references. This is the focus of our next tests. You can load a person, a product, a background, all as separate images and use a single prompt to combine them into one seamless professional looking shot. It's a huge leap in control and creativity. Now let's put it to the test with phase two. So we we'll load up an image of a woman walking in a shopping mall and I will enable the second load image node and we we'll load up an image of a Louis Vuitton bag. The prompt here is simple. The woman in image one is wearing the bag in image two. And of course the model is well able to do this. As you can see, it's put a strap on her and that was because I put wearing the bag. The strap color matches the bag, but it seems slightly out of place. So I will prompt it again quickly with carrying the bag. And here we have the image of her just carrying the bag without the strap. So product placement is bread and butter for this model. For all your creatives everywhere, take note. This is the model that you definitely need to have in your arsenal. So our next test is a good one. We're just going to take a portrait of a person and in Input image two will put a dramatic landscape photo and the prompt is place the person from image one into the scene from image two. Match the environmental lighting and color gradient of the new background. Okay, and of course, this is exactly what the model does. That is simply one reference image and this is what the model was designed to do. We'll move straight on to two reference images. So here I load up an image of a woman and an image of a man and we also have a living room scene. So the prompt is simply the woman in image one and the man in image three in the scene in image two. So this is something new that the model does. So the model combines all the three images together. But as you can see, it's kind of plastered them on top. So I will change the prompt. The woman in image one and the man in image three sitting together in the scene in image two. Again, this is the promise of the model. And as you can see, it has delivered. The key to understanding this tool is to stop thinking like a user and start thinking like a director. Your image is the set and your prompt is your script. You are in control. You use your words to place your characters, to change their wardrobe, to redress and set, to tell the model exactly what you want to do. The model is your actor and it takes direction from the prompt with incredible accuracy. And when you need absolute precision for the specific pose of a perfectly composed shot, you can bring in your specialist, control net. Think of the control net as your choreographer or your cinematographer locking down the exact pose or the camera angle. But for most creative work, you'll find that a well-written prompt is all you need to guide the generation and bring your vision to life. But the real power comes when you combine these tools to become a truly digital artist. Here, I'm taking this incredible image of a warrior on wolfback. The first step is use the model to remove the falling snow, giving us a clean plate to work from. Next, I extract the depth map. 
to create a new composition. I then remove the girl and remove the background, leaving only the wolf. I change its stance to a powerful howl. And then the final touch. I use the Quen's multi-image feature to composite a huge dramatic moon behind him. And just like that, we've gone from a single source image to two distinct visually stunning compositions. The wolf at the rest and the wolf howling at the moon. These then become the keyframes for the first and last frame in WAN 2.2, giving me complete narrative control over the final shot. So, think of this wolf animation as a fundamental starting block. It's a really basic example. By creating keyframes, your first and last frame with precision, you gain narrative control. Now expand this idea. Instead of just changing a pose, you could use this exact method to have a character walk into a scene, pick up an object. Frame 1 is the empty scene. Frame 2, created with Quen, has the character holding the object. The animation between will create the motion. You can even control the camera. Your first frame could be a wide shot of a landscape. Your last frame, generated with Quen, could be a close-up of a tree in that landscape. When you animate them, you've just created a perfectly controlled camera zoom through your scene. It's a completely new way of thinking about animation. It's less about hoping for a good result and more about architecting your shot frame by frame. But of course, before you can edit, you need a high quality starting image. If you're not using your own photos, you need a powerful image generator. One recommendation for this is Quen Image. It's from the same family, it's incredibly powerful and it produces a great baseline for editing. But you have options. For highly creative and artistic results, you've got Flux and Crea. For stunning photorealism, you can use SeaDream, though that is an API only. And a fantastic new option for incredibly fast, high quality images is Nano Banana, which is powered by Google's Gemini Flash. Of course, you also have Midjourney, Dali 3 and ChatGPT. Now the secret to getting the best possible starting image from any of these models isn't just the model itself, it's the prompt. And for that, you should use another AI. Don't just simply write a prompt like a wolf. Use your favourite large language model, whether that be ChatGPT, Gemini or a local model you run with a llama inside Comfy UI. Use the LLM to build a rich descriptive prompt for you. Ask it to describe a dramatic scene, the lighting, the camera lens, the mood. A well-architected prompt is the difference between a good image and a great one. You use one AI to instruct the other. And that's the workflow. We've covered the new Quen Image model, a powerful technique for creating animation keyframes and how to generate the best possible source images to begin with. It's the full pipeline from concept to final edit that gives you more creative control than ever before. As always, the workflow file for this workflow is on my website, free to download. My patrons get access to all the advanced files and the links for everything we've discussed today are in the description below. It's been a long day. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching, stay curious and I'll see you in the next one.